1200 Films Podcast. All horror, all the time. Sea Loaf here. Your hostess with the mostess. Quick announcement, I will be doing another special. We're going to put Bigfoot on the shelf for a little while, even though I'm currently reading some Bigfoot books that are amazing. But the new special is going to be, we're going to... I'm going to try to find a hidden gem. A hidden gem from the 70s and 80s. All horror films, of course, that I've never seen before. Trying to find, you know, one that I had overlooked. Just to see if there's any more good horror films from that era out there. And gosh, it was hard to find these films. But currently I'm at 13. So I might add a few more, but we'll see. That's a lot as it is. All right, on the current show, of course, the rating scale on the bottom, dumpster fire garbage. Can't quite recommend, and then okay if desperate, and then put it on the watch list, and then put it on top of the watch list. Uh, the first movie we're covering here is my 1100th film. <sighs> Too bad it couldn't have been better than this botched abortion. From 2010. Don't go out in the woods. IMDb has it as a 2.7 out of 10. I am only doing IMDb from now on since Rotten Tomatoes is a joke. I've looked up too many movies to see that nobody has reviewed once on any of these some movies, so I'm sticking with IMDb. So uh, don't go out in the woods. What drew me to it was I saw that it was directed by Vincent D'Onofrio, who is a well-respected TV actor and movie character actor. So I thought, well, can't be that bad, can it? Oh, it was. So this band, this... I don't know who to compare them to. Blink-182, maybe? I don't know. But they're going out in the middle of the nowhere forest so they can work on their next album and they said no cell phones no girls no nothing just just bring your instruments and survival stuff you know and of course they were trying tries to bring their cell phone so the lead singer throws a fit and breaks all their cell phones and then of course all their girlfriends slash groupies show up and uh hey guys how's it going we want to hang out uh, and then again the lead singer throws a fit throws a tantrum oh yeah and mixed in between all of this stuff there's like random songs this movie is more musical than anything else and uh 80 percent of these songs are absolute garbage just nothing there was one at the end that you know maybe one day i'll listen to again but other than that no and then sometimes the guy would sing it and then he would just walk off and then the whatever girl he left behind is starts singing the song for him. Like, what is this? <sighs> and there's a few hints along the way with hunters out in the woods. They like, go, oh, maybe the, and then there's some sniper out there killing animals and stuff. And that's when they all start dying one by one. Ah. Uh, it took a lot to get through this. It took a lot. A lot of patience. A lot of Mountain Dew. Uh, dumpster fire garbage. It's just It's just poop. It's just no good. 2021, The Deep House. 5.4 out of 10, according to IMDb. What's scarier than a haunted house? A haunted house underwater. This old house has since been flooded over, and now it's about 100 feet below the surface, and it just sits there, untouched. So these scuba divers, I think they're newlyweds, and they're going to go down there and uh, check it out, and that's when things happen. Nothing really super original, but it, the, the effect of being underwater the entire time... And the effect that you know their oxygen isn't going to last forever does kind of add an extra element to it. So I'll say good job. It was entertaining. Kept me watching. Uh, sure, put it on the watch list. Next one. From 2022. 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Netflix blew their load on this one. It's got a 4.8 out of 10. Very quickly, you can see they're trying to uh, copy what Halloween did. Let's give the movie the same title as it did originally, even though it's a sequel, but it's not going to say part two, and we're going to bring back several characters from the original 40-some years ago. And that's what they did here. Not nearly as well as Halloween, but still effective. And <laughs> a lot of the complaints of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with that title, you'd think there would be a lot of chainsaw deaths, even though there was like one or two, and they were kind of implied. You didn't really see anything. There's nothing implied in this one. There's a lot of people getting carved up. A lot of limbs being hacked. Uh, there's a scene with the bus. Woo! The blood is, the blood is f a flowing. Um, I thought it was fine. Is it great? No, but you know it's okay if desperate. Check it out though. It's 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 something. Um, twenty twenty, twelve hour shift. A five point four out of ten. It's about these uh, people working at a hospital, I guess. It's a small little hospital, but um, it's more of a cl little clinic, I guess. And they're working overnight, and these nurses are a little shady. People that are dead or recently deceased, they kind of harvest some organs sometimes. So they can sell them on the black market for a little extra money. And the, and the guy that runs this black market scheme is uh, ex-pro wrestler Mick Foley slash Mankind slash Cactus Jack. He was pretty good in this role. He was well casted. He did. He was believable. But um, the girl that was in charge of transporting said organs drops them and loses them. So she has to go back and say, "Hey, crooked nurses, I need some. I need some more organs, or else we're in big doo doo." So throughout the rest of the film, they're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to help along the people that are dying so they can harvest their organs and get out of trouble so uh, things get out of control real quick. Excellent little film. I, I enjoyed it. Put it on the watch list. It's good enough. Uh, 2016 Trail to Terror. IMDb has this a 8.2 out of 10. Why so high? It's a documentary. It's from the TV show Destination Fear, who have done three seasons, and I've watched every episode. It's a ghost hunting show. Anything ghost hunting, I've seen every episode. I'm obsessed. But I thought this was done recently before I watched it. I didn't know it was from before the show started. Some of the characters, the, the people look a little different. There's a guy named Tanner on there who's been bald for as long as I've, I've seen him on there. And all of a sudden he had full hair. Full head of hair. What is going on? What is this? It's because it was before the show started. He looks like Powder. from the, Remember that movie? Anyway. What the trail of here is, it is uh, five haunted locations on this little stretch of highway. And you can go check them out one at a time. Bam, 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 bam. And that's what they decide to do when they get the little camper. Then they go. They don't just visit. They spend the whole night in each location. There's four of them. The main guy and his sister. And then the tanner guy who was, had hair is now bald. And then some other guy. The camera guy. Who I've never seen again. But the... Uh, the first stop was pretty amazingly terrifying. And then by the time they finished the fourth spot, the, the, the sister, the girl, she says, I'm tapping out. I'm done. This is too much for me. <laughs> Shockingly, when they did the TV show, they brought her back and she's done fine ever since. 
But then they got to the fifth location, and that place was carved out of a horror movie. They'd be sitting somewhere, just hanging out, and all of a sudden they'd hear... Or a... What the hell? This went on all night. It was ridiculous. I, I don't know. I don't know if I could stay in that. But it was interesting. Um, yeah, check it out. Put it on the watch list. Good little documentary. Um, mm, 2021. Uh, last night in Soho. 7.1 out of 10. This was number one on a lot of people's lists for top horror film. Um, artistically impressive. Uh, a lot of effort went into this, I can see. Basically, this chick is uh, renting out this room from this older lady in the uh, little attic area. It's a little room, a little tiny room. But apparently, a lot of uh, things have happened in the little room. And a lot of people that have met untimely ends have lived in this tiny little room over the the many, many years, and uh, so it's kind of haunted. So when she's going to sleep, she's kind of reliving their lives, the previous tenants. And she kind of jumps into their bodies and kind of becomes them. Um, the problem with this, the third, act, the beginning of the third act took forever to get rolling along it's hard for me to describe it without giving things away but it got really redundant really really redundant for about 20 25 minutes and i was like really and i started checking the time on the movie when you start checking the time on how much time is left on the movie that's how you know things aren't going good and things weren't going good Still, overall, it's worth checking out. So I would say, because of that, okay, if desperate, just be patient towards the end. It goes from great to good to meh, <laughs> my opinion. All right, time for our double feature super reviews of Malignant and Titan. First up is Titan from 2021. Not going to show you a snippet of the trailer because it's foreign language. There's subtitles to read, but there's not a lot of dialogue, so there really isn't that much to read. So don't let that distract you from watching this. Um, IMDb has it as a 6.6 .6 out of 10. Again, this was another one that was on a lot of people's top 10 list for 2021, so I had to check it out. This movie is nuts. This movie's crazy. So this little girl gets in a car accident and she has this big ugly metal plate in the side of her head. She then grows up, but she's like some kind of quasi celebrity because she dances on cars. And she gets paid well to do this and people want her autograph and you know, want her want to do want to you know hang out with her. Yet she still lives with her parents. Go figure that. And then, uh, and then uh, there's a there's a sex scene with her in a car. And then it gets weirder from there. Uh, then she finds this guy who's kind of like a father figure, but not really. But he's kind of taking care of her and. And while her body kind of goes through some changes, we'll say. Um, boy, it's really hard to describe this one. If I were to have watched this before I put out my top 10 list that I did early this year for uh, 2021, this would have definitely made top 10 easily. So because of that, I put it on top of the watch list. Check it out. Amazing. Uh, the next one from 2021, <gasps> Malignant. I'm saying that. Daddy, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Gabriel. Gabriel, who are you talking to? Gabriel, who are you talking to? Is he your imaginary friend? Imaginary friend? He's the devil. 
2021 Malignant, a 6.3 out of 10. Oh my God, Jesus H, this movie's nuts. This movie's so crazy. Oh boy, how do I describe this piece of work? So this woman <laughs> apparently had a twin at some point and it was destroyed or cut out of her or whatever. So it's so it's haunting her. It's like, well, okay. We've seen this before in Stephen King's The Dark Half and many other films. But um <laughs> but then it takes a then about forty five minutes in to this kind of run play by numbers horror movie, which was still fine, and then it then there's a reveal. Then there's Something you don't expect. <laughs> it was all that was was a switch, quick little camera shift, a quick little camera turn, and oh my god, that's what's happening. Oh, well, that changes things. <sighs> Some people didn't like it because it was too over the top. I said more over the top the better. If it's crazy, it's crazy. If it's completely insane, nuts. I'll keep watching. And I did. Thoroughly enjoyed this film. This would have probably made my top five of the year if I had watched it before. But I'm giving it its love now. So, yes. Put it on the very top of your watch list. Watch this immediately and let me know what you think. Malignant. So that being said, um, the next episode, I don't know if it'll be the, the special or not, but this is the list I have for the next regular episode. Uh, these films include Encounter, The Little Things, which has uh, Denzel and Jared Leto, and one called Hideout, one called The Block Island Sound, which a lot of people liked, one called Sun, S-O-N, Sun. We're going to check out the dark thriller from... Dustin Hoffman from the 70s called Marathon Man. Then from 2022, we're going to watch one called Slap Face and one called No Exit. No Exit Excellence. But I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know. But um, it's on the, the docket, so we'll see. All right, until next time. Mm-hmm.